Hello. This week I'm going to be looking at uh, some civilians uh, for the battle table. Now I've been building these up for a little while in the background. I've had some of these over a year and some more recent. Um, what I've got here is I've got the awesome cart by Rubicon. And then I bought to go with that the figure and the load and then I think his wife with suitcases that actually goes with that kit by Rubicon. Another one that I picked up that I might use him in a field somewhere is this uh, farm hand set consisting of the, the bloke, his wife and a child. So that that's that's another set by Rubicon. And then of course I've got all of these that I had from Badger 3D. Um unfortunately uh one or two were broken when the first came and rather than just replacing them he sent me a complete new set which was really kind of him. And not only that, he resized them so that they are matching the twenty eight mil for me. Um, what I'm going to do is where I have got duplicates um, I'm probably going to look at trying to adapt them you know like I might try and cut the roof off of this disconnect all of these parts and then put the window screen part back on so I've got two different looking vehicles and then the rest of them as you can see look like refugees and uh that's obviously the way I'm going to be uh, basing them up as well. Um, now, I've been having a lot of thought about this. Um, might even kind of look for some advice online, see what other people think. But I was wondering whether to, you know, I, I put these type things on the battle table just to give it more character, more of a lived in feeling. But I was thinking with these... Uh, I've got so many of these type um, civilians, refugees, that I wonder if, you know, you could, uh, even if it's just on a personal basis in solo games for myself, of adapting them so that they become part of the rule set. You know, so like where where there's a road and it's got a load of uh, refugees making their way up the road out of the bombed out town. If you've got vehicles, it kind of slows them down, you know, like like a vehicle crossing a a muddy field or a hay field, you know, as a a reduced movement. I wonder whether they could be incorporated into that rule. Um, just an idea, really. But I mean, it seems fairly obvious to me that when refugees were were on the roads, that it would cause a bit of a hold up for the, any military that were manoeuvring in that area. Um, whether I go on to develop a rule like that for myself to use or just have them as eye candy on the table, I'm not sure. But the point is I want to actually, you know, add them to the table now because I've had them for a long while. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building up any of these that need building up. And then I'll be, you know, priming them and painting them and basing them. So what I'm going to start with is the the metal kits and the cart because I obviously these don't need building; they're built. So these are the ones I'm going to start by building. So I'll just clear my table and then I'll bring you back. Right, so I'm going to start by building up some of these figures. I'm going to start with the uh, the couple that end up sitting on the cart. And I noticed in this set, it doesn't show it on the outside packet, but you've got a choice for the woman whether to have her seated or standing up. Um, I'm going to go with a seated one because I wanted to sit on the uh, wagon somewhere. I'm not quite sure how that will work out yet, but that's what I'm going to go for.
I'm going to use super glue on this and uh, use my fast spray as well. There she is, her arms folded, looking mighty fed up. <laughs> right, another chap, put his arms on. So that's the little man. Very good detail, don't you think? Much of the rest of this is going to be glued in place when I've actually got a cart built for it. Although I noticed this, you've got the two pieces that make up the cart full, like that. So I can set them to one side now. And there's nothing to actually glue on the uh, farm hands apart from is one arm holding the tool. And that's it. Right, now the other thing that I've decided um, with these three farm figures they came with these uh, Rubicon bases now I'm not saying they're you know, not good, they are I'll probably find a use for them somewhere but I think I'm going to go with the Warlord ones because they're just a bit thinner you know, if you hold them together And you see how, how much thicker that is. It's like twice the thickness. I think it make it very noticeable. So I'm going to keep them for something else. And uh, glue them on this. I mean, that's in very good detail creases in his trousers even I must admit I'm really impressed with that it looks really nice just put the lady on her base What's there? Like I say, it's very good detail. Right, now the child. So that's a little family of three. They're ready to go in the cart. So now it's the cart. So I'm going to clear my bench a little bit and then we'll have a look at the cart. Right, when it comes to the Rubicon wagon, you've got a choice. Um, you can have a two horse wagon or one horse uh, pulling it. I'm going to go for the one horse because I just think it'll look a bit better and more realistic for the, you know, the job that I want it to be doing. So I can use the other horse somewhere once I've built it up, I suppose. Right, so I'm going to start with building one of the horses. Uh, 
Better get his ears the right way round. <laughs> Might be added afterwards, I think it can, can't it? Well, let's put the head together. I would normally use my Revel glue on this, um, but somebody mentioned to me that the Rubicon plastic can dry out after a time using that. Um, so that's why I'm going for the super glue, but I'd rather not use super glue on a kit like this. But I don't want to take any chances. the heads to go. <clears throat> I think you know who that is. <laughs> he makes enough appearances on my videos these days. Sorry about that, it was a delivery. So this time Bob and Peg really did have a reason to bark. So that's the first horse. Right, I'll just get the other one put together and then I'll bring you back. Right, so that's the horses done. So now we'll start to put the wagon together. As I say, I'm gonna, just personal choice, I'm going to go for the one horse. It's 
that little bit. better when it's based because obviously it's lifting it up as you can see at the minute um, but obviously once that's glued down it'll be fine all right now it's saying on the drawing that this small piece needs to be fitted first so I'm going to press ahead and do that goes on the back side into this recess right let's glue that in place right let's attach the side pieces to the uh, bottom Next, I think. Let's get this on first. Make sure those wheels are lined up before they're set. Right. We want a seat. That's that right. So the underneath part of the front So that doesn't have anything on the back no. So that's the awesome cart finished. As I say it's a bit skew whiff at the minute, but I'll have to it does mention, you know, you'll need a base preferably. And obviously you will because that's gonna hold the all steady in place. So I'll find a piece of suitable plastic to make a base with and I'll be right back. So I've caught a small piece of black plastic that I had scrap and I'm just shaping the corners off it with a bit of sand, fine sandpaper. Smoothing out where I've cut it. Right. So that's my base. Let's 
so there we have it the awesome court and I can get to all this to base it up I'm not going to put very much on it anyway but it can be undercoated then together with the other with the horse itself all right I'll just get tidied up and then we'll put the uh, the chap and uh, all the luggage on the back of it back in a set I've just been looking at uh, the luggage going on the back of this it fits in very nicely um, but I've just had a thought rather than going ahead and sticking it in which is going to make it awkward to paint inside there I think what I'll do is I'll uh, give all of these a coat of um, primer and then put it together afterwards because it would have saved me struggling with the painting so that's it so that's all of the uh, Rubicon figures obviously the driver will be sitting on there but again I'm going to paint him before I put him on I think so I'll just get these all primed and uh, then I'll also prime the ones that I got from Badger 3D as well and uh, then I'll bring you back right so as you can see uh, they're all painted up now um, I've tried to make the ones that were duplicate models look reasonably different I think that's come out okay and what I've gone for on the road is a bit of a mottled grey I've mixed a few greys and uh, just made it try and try and make it look nondescript really so it'll fit with all the different road types I've got I mean it might be that I could lighten it up a touch and that would work better um, but basically I'm fairly happy as they are um, same with some of the vehicles obviously I've put this one together now and that it's all painted up but you know it's it's like I was saying at the very beginning I know these essentially they're just like a little bit of eye candy for the for the table but I do think that they could um, fulfill a useful role you know like for blocking a road um, you could have them streaming out of the town that's you know where there's a battle going on and that way it stops you using the road much like you'd use a roadblock or you could use it so it slows down the troops coming in you know, so that it reduces their movement value because they've got to get past the streaming, you know, refugees leaving the town. I think it's just to give that overall war feeling. Um, but I think that's something I'm going to develop myself, you know, perhaps in a few solo games and think about how I can best use them. But uh, for now, I'm going to call these done. Um... As you know, they're from a variety of uh, people. I mean, I've got some that are from Rubicon, some that are from uh, Badger 3D Creations, and I'm sure there's others out there as well. So, you know, if if it's the kind of thing you'd like to do for your board, it's worth having a look around, see what's available. Right, what I'm going to do now um, is I'll sign off with some photographs so you can have a bit more of a look at them and uh, yeah that's that's my uh, civilians complete so thanks very much for joining me hope you found some of it useful or interesting if you have please consider giving me a thumbs up or even subscribing so you get to see when my next video drops okay then thanks again and see you soon Bye.